Well, we begin tonight with readings from Donald Trump's supporters. You are about to hear the words of Donald Trump's most devoted supporters. Supporters who are willing to kill for Donald Trump. They will also vote for Donald Trump, no matter what crimes he is charged with or convicted of. Donald Trump knows he cannot win the presidency without the votes of the people whose words you are about to hear. Donald Trump tries to please these people every day. They are the kind of people Donald Trump never wanted to know or be near or have anything to do with until he became a politician. Now Donald Trump needs these people. Now Donald Trump is hoping that one of these people can somehow get on one of his criminal juries because that might be his only hope of not being convicted. Everything you are about to hear comes from transcripts of voicemail messages left by Donald Trump's most devoted supporters. I hope they bury your ugly ass. You are filthy little Jews. I mean, honestly, you should be assassinated. You should be killed. And there's this from another devoted supporter of Donald Trump. Resign now, you dirty, treasonous piece of trash snake. We are going to get you and any one of you dirty, backstabbing, lying, cheating Americans. You are nothing but a bunch of communists. We are coming to remove you permanently. And here's another voicemail message from a devoted supporter of Donald Trump. Do you think being a judge changes the fact that you're a pathetic little, you little dork with your little Jew girl helper? God, I hope you die. That is just a sampling of the voicemail messages reviewed by court security officials in Manhattan, where the judge presiding over the current civil fraud trial of Donald Trump in Manhattan receives those calls, hundreds of them, every day. In a filing with the appeals court in New York to support the continuation of a gag order, on Donald Trump in that case, the head of security for the court said the threats against Justice Ngoron and his clerk are considered to be serious and credible and are not hypothetical or speculative. The implementation of the limited gag orders resulted in a decrease in the number of threats, harassment, and disparaging messages that the judge and his staff received. However, when Mr. Trump violated the gag orders, the number of threatening, harassing, and disparaging messages increased. On a daily basis, the judge and his staff are being inundated with hundreds of harassing and threatening phone calls, voicemail messages, and emails that has resulted in the Judicial Threats Assessment Unit having to constantly reassess and evaluate what security protections to put in place to ensure the safety of the judge and those around him. On Thanksgiving Day, Special Prosecutor Jack Smith filed a copy of that statement in the case of United States of America versus Donald J. Trump, where Donald Trump is appealing a limited gag order issued in that case by the trial court judge, Tanya Chutkin. The appeals court, federal appeals court, hearing in that case last Monday indicated that the appeals court judges were in favor of preserving most, if not all, of the gag order issued by Judge Chutkin. Today, Donald Trump's lawyers urged the New York Appeals Court, which is considering Donald Trump's appeal of the gag order issued by Judge Arthur N. Goran, who is receiving, he's the judge who's receiving those hundreds of harassing phone calls a day, to completely overrule the gag order issued by the judge. The Trump lawyers insist that death threats issued by Donald Trump supporters because of things Donald Trump says about the people threatened are not Donald Trump's fault. The Trump lawyers write, at base, the disturbing behavior engaged in by anonymous third-party actors towards the judge and principal law clerk publicly presiding over an extremely polarizing and high-profile 
trial merits appropriate security measures. However, it does not justify the wholesale abrogation of petitioners' First Amendment rights in a proceeding of immense stakes to petitioners, which has been compromised by the introduction of partisan bias on the bench. In essence, the Constitution does not permit Justice Ngoran to curtail petitioners' speech simply because people may react to things that President Trump says. And so there are Donald Trump's lawyers falsely accusing Judge Ngoran of having a partisan bias against Donald Trump in the case. Those lawyers know that the language they are using in that statement is in and of itself enough to create more death threats against the judge who they are falsely and unethically accusing of having a partisan bias. Today in Washington, D.C., Judge Chutkin once again ruled against Donald Trump, this time for what the judge called a Trump fishing expedition. Donald Trump's criminal defense lawyers in the Washington, D.C. federal case against him told the judge last month that they wanted authority to obtain information from the House January 6th committee, which was disbanded by the Republicans now controlling the House. The Trump lawyers were asking for a massive amount of material that they imagine, just imagine, the January 6th committee may have at some point possessed. In her order denying the Trump lawyer's request, Judge Chutkin wrote today, quote, defendant does not state with any specificity the information that he seeks in those records, repeating only that it is important and related to the events and people associated with the select committee's work, and therefore the January 6, 2021 attack. The broad scope of the records that the defendant seeks and his vague description of their potential relevance resemble less a good faith effort to obtain identified evidence than they do a general fishing expedition that attempts to use Rule 17C subpoena as a discovery device.